Hello everyone, it's Corey Vanderpool here at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to show you how to go from a raw, completely raw file like this and get it to a completely finished retouched version like this. Along the way I'm going to show you some tricks through Camera Raw, some tricks on how to add grain, add contrast, how to export properly, the proper way to save your files, and lots in between. So let's jump right in. Once you have your final images here in whatever editing software you'd like to use, I'm using Bridge mainly because I only use this to view photos. I don't really do any other treatments in it. Everything's pretty much done in Photoshop and this one trick in Camera Raw. So once Camera Raw is open, I like to take a little bit of clarity and just a little bit of sharpening. And you can see when you zoom right in, that is sharp. Now this will not save your image. You cannot rely on it. What you have to do is already have an extremely sharp image and from there you can build on it and make and improve on it. And that's what this is. Just adding a little bit more pop, a little bit more density. Just to make everything kind of leap out at you. And you want to open that into Photoshop. All right, from here, you want to go to your crop. If you want to know all about crops, check out this video here. It shows you how to export and deals with cropping. But for now, we're just going to click this action and get your crop right in there. You hit Apple T or Command T, and then that's where you can control your crop. This is a 4x5 because that's it was mainly shot for Instagram, and that's their aspect ratio. If it was a different magazine like The New Yorker with a thinner crop, something like this, then that's what you would deal with. But for now, four by five. All right, from here, we're gonna save it. I have everything here under finals, under my Ohaka folder. This is where all the raws were, but I'm saving these under finals, save. From here, we can begin retouching. The first thing I like to do is shift apple in for a skin. And then we start working on the big stuff. Now there is a lot to go over here so if you really do want to get a full breakdown head over to the only skin retouching tutorial you'll ever need up in the top right i break down how to do the skin with the healing brush and the dodge and burn tool to perfection but for now i'm just going to speed this up all right from here you can see that we've done the big stuff we've gotten rid of all the blemishes and we've really cleaned this hat up and this was as simple as just using one tool, a healing brush tool, going over it, smoothing out what you think needed to be done. We also worked on the body here. The next thing we're going to do here is the dodge and burn tool. You want to go to a soft light and you want to fill with soft neutral gray. From here, we're using our O tool or the dodge tool. And we're, all we're doing is making the lights darker and the darks lighter. So as you can see here, Always start with the burn tool, which darkens, and all you're doing is painting in where it's a little bit bright. Again, I like to use a low opacity brush, so it's a little bit more subtle, and you can see the subtle movement just even already. That's made such a big difference. And again, you're painting over where it's light, and then painting over with the dodge tool where it's dark. Again, if you want to learn more about this, head over to the skin retouching tutorial. I break it down in depth, but for now, let's just move ahead. All right, here you can see we are done. There's a huge difference between the dodging and burning. It's really evened out the complexion, really evened out the skin tones, and this image already almost looks like it's finished, but alas, we do have a long way to go. I do see a couple tweaks that we could be done in here, just a couple skin cleanups. So again, I'm, sometimes I like to go back to it, call this skin two, and just retouch some of these bumps out, just to make it even smoother. All right, this looks fantastic. It's time to go on to our skin tones. So what I like to do is first save our skin in our own grouping so it's nice and organized and then start a new contrast layer now if you really want to see a breakdown on how i do all of my tones just head over to this video and you can see how i break down all my treatments with a bunch of different skins but for now let's just speed it right up so you see i've added everything in here this is my brightness and contrast layer i do one full one full blast i think i could keep it going it's getting a little muddy and in the darks but i'm going to add one more almost to 70 percent 
I just feel like this is starting to get a little crunchy, so I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit. And now what I wanna do is take my curves layers and even this out. So the way I do that is I take a curves layer and I raise the lower mids so it's I can see definition in all of the in the shadows. And then I invert it by holding command delete. And then I do the same thing but on the opposite side and I bring down the highlights. So wherever it's dark, mostly in the shoulder here, I can bring that back. And then all you want to do is paint it in. So with a low opacity brush, somewhere around 13%, you just dot it in. You see, dot the hat in, dot in the, around the eyes and the mouth. Nothing crazy here. You can already see this is doing a tremendous amount of evening this out. And then, but again, this doesn't, you can't do this quickly. This takes time. You have to be precise. You really have to watch your lines, make sure you get no bleed like this. Bring the opacity back to 100 and paint it back. So this thing just can't be sped up. Again, if you want to see a full breakdown of how I do the tones, just head over to my skin tones video. But for now, I'm just going to speed this up. So you can see when I add these layers on, what I darkened was a bit of the garment where it was blowing out and then how I lit so it's a lot more even. You can see a lot more of the detail while still keeping all of this drama. The next thing we wanna do is bring the hue and saturation down just a little bit, just to bring the tones back to somewhere a little bit normal where it was uh, from the raw file. And then we're gonna add a little bit of color balance. This is just a little bit of cyan, a little bit of blue to get rid of the reds in the skin tone. Very simple, very subtle. Reds aren't the most flattering thing, so you just want to bring that out, bring that back a little bit using the cyan. And then add curves. From there, you can see there's a huge difference. Very stylized, but still very natural. From there, you want to go to your actions and start a new grain layer. I put grain on all of my digital files. It's the only way to live. If you want to know how to do proper grain, head over to my grain video. I break it down in a full tutorial. But for now, hit your action, and you have your first layer of grain. You can see as I turn it on and off, it makes a tremendous difference. It brings it all together, and it makes this amazing texture on the background. From here, I'm just gonna add one more and then dial the opacity back, just so it's a little bit more even, somewhere around 30%. So there you have it, you're finished. You want to just bring this into a new folder so it's nice and organized. You have all of your layers here. You can see the before and after. You want to click Apple S or Command S to save. And while it's saving this full layer file, now we can start working on getting a flat tiff. So what we want to do is select this mask and hold Shift Command I to invert it and then push the C button for the crop tool and push Enter twice. Now that your image is cropped, there's no shortcut key for this. You want to go layer, flatten image. And then you hold shift Apple S. If you hold Apple S, you'll save over your layered file, which is not what you want to do. And here I always like to do a new folder. I like to save under TIFFs. So that way you have a folder for your flat TIFFs and you have a folder for your JPEGs. So here we are, we're going to save this here. Once that's saved, you want to hold Option Command I, change this to somewhere workable. I like 1500 pixels because it is great for emails, great for Instagram, great for web. Then you hold Shift Command Option S, which is save for web, which I think is the best possible way to save. Save it under your JPEG folder, which will be located where your TIFFs are. Save. And there you have it, you can close that image. So now when you go back to where you started, you can see we have our finished image pretty close to the original. And these are all our layer TIFFs. You can see that by the file size down here, almost a gig, you can see that they're all cropped. But when we go to TIFFs, you can see that we have our flattened TIFFs all around 70 megabytes, which is full high res. And then if we go back one more and go to JPEGs, you can see we have our JPEGs here too. And that is just five megabytes. If that export process was just a little bit technical and a little bit tricky, head over to my video, how to batch export, finish files. It breaks it down a little bit clearer and a little bit simpler. 
But other than that, you're finished. That's how you get a raw file to a finished beauty. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or reach out to me. My name is Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Instagram and Twitter. Happy shooting.